Hey everybody, welcome to Hook and Hunt TV Live. We are powered by Dakota Lithium Batteries, so make sure you go to dakotalithium.com and see all the cool stuff that they have coming out. Tonight's going to be, I think it's going to be a really, really fun show because we're going to take some of your questions live as well as we're going to show off a new spinnerbait. We're going to be talking um, about the new spinnerbait blades that just came on the market. New spinnerbait blades that just got here are from Lure Parts Online, and they are called the Miramax blades, okay? So we're going to show you that in a little bit. We're also going to show you some really cool underwater footage from the Miramax blades and show you exactly why they are different underwater. So I'll be looking for comments and things like that too as we as we go on. Uh, as I said, we this is brought to you by, we are powered by Dakota Lithium Batteries. Go to dakotalithium.com and you can find out more cool stuff about them. Also tonight, glad you are here and especially for the ones that are here early, because we have a very cool prize package tonight, and that is from American Tackle. Check it out. So from American Tackle, they're going to give away tonight this real cool Wave Army prize package. It's a shirt, American Tackle hat, uh, hat and braided line scissors. So how do we win that? This is easy. Here's what I'm going to give you the easiest way to do this. Go to americantackle.us. OK, I want you to look up when you get there, the microwave guide system. And I want you to tell me in the comments below how many awards the microwave guide system has won. I'm going to pick from those and I will get you that American Tackle prize package. Remember, go to americantackle.us. That's where you find the info on the microwave guide system. And just so you know, this is exactly what you are going to be winning. Very cool hat, shirt. And uh, braided lion scissors. This is actually the hat I have on here. Really cool shirt, and uh, and some really neat stuff from American Tackle. They are fantastic. So let's get into talking about these spinner baits. And I've been pretty excited uh, since Lure Parts Online came out with these new hybrid blades. We were waiting for this for a while, and I'm going to try to show you one. Actually, let's just show you a picture. So you're going, what do the hybrid baits look like? They look like this. Okay, as you can see here, it's half gold and half silver, and that's stamped on the front and back. Now, this spinnerbait that I made myself right here is a size four on the front blade and a four and a half on the back. As you can see, the top is gold, the bottom is silver. So, why does that make a difference? For those of you spinnerbait aficionados, and some of you contacted me online today, you said, I love fishing some spinnerbaits. What's new in spinnerbaits? Spinnerbaits have been around forever, and they always caught fish. They always will. Okay, two most important things on spinnerbaits are flash and vibration. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about those tonight too, and some tactics to hopefully help make your spinnerbait fishing even better. Now think about this. In most cases, we're, we're not talking colored blades tonight. We're going to talk nickel and we're going to talk gold. Okay, so on nickel and gold blades, each of them, especially on willow leaf, with a willow leaf blade, you will get more flash. With the Colorado type blade, you will get more vibration. So in stained and muddy water, a lot of times I'm throwing either two Colorados, a single Colorado, maybe the T-Blade, or maybe a willow leaf and Colorado combo, okay, which I really like in the fall. But when I'm fishing clear water, and if I'm fishing for small mouths, I'm just fishing clear water, I like a double willow leaf spinnerbait. It, to me, that's a great representation of a bait fish. And you can see that right here with those blades, that skirt, everything like that. That's just a great representation of a bait fish. Now, the flash on a nickel blade underwater, and I'm going to show you some underwater footage here in just a bit to prove my point. By the way, if you like this information, please share this, okay? Because the more people that it gets out there too, you guys are really going to love this stuff when we show it to you, when we show you the underwater footage. Now, on a nickel blade, you have a constant flash of that nickel. That's what you want in a willow leaf. You want flash, okay? You don't want that fish seeing the whole bait. You want them seeing a the silhouette of the bait. Gold blade is the same way. It's a constant flash. However, when you have a hybrid blade, the flash completely changes. It's completely different. Nobody's ever done this on blades before until Lure Parts Online did it. But you're like, Jim, you're talking about it. Let's see it. I'm going to show you what the hybrid blades look like underwater. Check this out.
you can see the blades go in there. It's not a constant flash. Sometimes one flashes, sometimes the other flashes. Here's a close-up where we slow it down. Check that out. There's not another blade that flashes out there like that, nor reacts like that in the water until these hybrid blades. This was the first bass I caught on it the other day. We'll film in an episode. It's a three and a half pounder. Look how he inhaled that bait. I actually have to push to get it out of there. He inhaled that bait. That is the power of the new hybrid blades from Lure Parts Online. And I'll show it I'll show it again to you here in just a little bit so you guys can see some more of that underwater footage. But I wanted you to see what those new hybrid blades do. For those of you just joining us right now, this is a hybrid blade we're talking about. Half gold, half silver. And we'll show it underwater here again in a little bit because I think it's really important for people to see that this is different. This will give you a different presentation. This to me is the next evolution in spinnerbaits is what we can do with these blades. Now, Lure Parts Online has a lot more stuff coming out soon. We have a new compact spinnerbait coming out soon that you can build and add the blades to. So a little compact quarter and three eighths that you can add these ultra flash mirror max blades to. That's going to be phenomenal because you can make a small bait that's heavy so you can cast it a long distance. And be honest with you, when a bite is tough, I like throwing smaller baits when I can get away with it. That spinnerbait is going to allow you to do that. Okay. So Right now, you can go to Lure Parts Online or right after this video right here, and you go to LurePartsOnline.com. I'll put the code in later and right at the end of this, so that way you can get a discount on if you want it. But I want to talk about um, a couple tips for you for spinner baits that I think will make your spinner bait fishing a little bit better. So here's one of the blades that I, that I built just recently here. I want to show you something. This is just the head and frame. Let's get this over here for you from one of the lure parts online spinner baits right here. Just, just how I get it, how I get the frame. Okay, you can see that. And I like the twist wire. Why do I like the twist wire? Um, I like because they're just a little bit more durable and these wires aren't that thick. These blades put off a good vibration. So I like that, especially when I'm fishing northern waters like Wisconsin or Minnesota, you have a tendency for pike to grab a spinner bait. This will keep my spinner bait intact a little bit longer. So I like the twist wire. Okay, most, now here's what I'm gonna show you. You noticed on that video, how deeply that fish was hooked or how well he was hooked. So let's do that with all the spinner baits you have without buying anything additionally. Take the spinner baits you have. And if you do this trick, I'm going to show you what to do. All spinner baits, when they come out of the package and they work this way, the hook is directly in line with the eye tie and that works. But occasionally if a bait slips over and slides, the fish can get barely hooked or the fish can come off. So how do we avoid that from happening more? Okay. So here's what I'm going to show you. I take my long nose pliers here and I take that bend and I just bend it up a little bit. I want that angle going from here to here. That's it. I'm hoping maybe you can see that right there. It's just slightly up. What that does is now when the fish grabs a hold of it, ah, you can see it grabs right away. Okay. And it's because that angle is created. Now, when you set the hook, the hook's going to come in contact with the first thing in that fish's mouth. It's not going to slide. Okay, it's not going to slide. Just bend that hook up just a little bit and you get a higher hooking percentage on any spinnerbait. Now, one thing I always like to do with my spinnerbait blades is how my arm is. I want to make sure that the arm, the upper arm of the spinnerbait is not covering the point of the hook. I don't mind if the blade is because the blade can step out of the way when a fish bites down, but I want the upper arm out of the way. So what I'll do is I'll sometimes bend the, the lower wire down and open that wire up a little bit more. And as long as it doesn't affect the running capability, right here, you have a bigger area for the fish to come in and get hooked, okay? If you're having problems with that, leave the lower wire down, just bend the top wire down a little bit, all right? I also make sure that I pretty much always throw the same type of head on the spinnerbait. Again, this is just a lure parts online one, but I know how it comes through cover. If you keep switching different heads, they're going to have a tendency to roll over because you're not used to what they're doing. I found a head that works for me. This is a 3 8 ounce size that comes over cover really well, and it matches really well with a four and a four and a half inch blade. Okay, so that is a size that I use, and this is, I know you can't tell because it disappears on the green screen, but it's just a standard white and chartreuse blade. Okay, so for those of some of you that joined us or haven't seen us um, up to this point, this is, we're a little over halfway done here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back and show you that video again about how those hybrid blades 
look in the water. It's worth your time to see this because not a lot of people will show you what the baits look exactly like underwater. I want you to focus on that because that is what's going to tell you how you're going to catch fish, what those blades are doing. It's important, whatever lure you throw, it's always important to know what your lures do. Don't just throw it out there and hope that you get a bite. Understand what they do and understand where to use them. Where I was talking about that intermittent flash with these blades, that's what's really cool right there. They're never flashing at the same time. It's never a consistent flash. It puts off a lot of vibration, even for those willow leaves, but that flash is like a stroke. It's something they haven't seen before. And as you can see, that bass inhaled that with those two little tricks I taught you by bending the wire out and actually bending that hook wire up just a little bit. When you bend that hook up just a slight angle, you can see it right there, you get a much better hook set, okay? So those are a couple things that you can add to your spinner baits. Now, if you missed it, when we started, we said, and also tonight, we want to thank Dakota Lithium Batteries for doing this every couple of weeks or whenever we decide to do this. We actually have another episode next week. I'll talk about that as well as something else special next week. But tonight, because you're here, you've got a chance to win this from the American Tackle Company. Where all my, all my rod components that I get from Lure Parts Online, they all come from American Tackle. And so tonight, American Tackle is giving away this package right here. Wave Army t-shirt, American Tackle hat, and this really cool... Uh, braided line scissors. Okay. So what do you got to do? All you have to do is you have to go to americantackle.us. Okay. Do that. Find the microwave guide system. When you find that, then tell me how many awards they won. I will pick somebody and then we will go. I see a lot of you guys are commenting on here. So let's, hi Rick Reed. Hi James. Hi Don Morse. All right. Uh, let's see. Rick Reed says, um, all right, hook manufacturer and size you like. Rick, great question. So the hook manufacturer I like, I like all my baits made with VMC. I've always been a big VMC fan. Lure Parts Online, you can get them custom made that way. Some of them come with Mustad, some come with VMC. You can have them custom made however you want. Hi, Bob Hunter. Um, but make sure, I like VMC. I just always have. I've And yes, I, I work with VMC, but I have for years. And some of my biggest fish, my biggest sturgeon, uh, my biggest swordfish, my biggest pike, my biggest bass, all that have been caught on VMC hooks. So I'm a big fan of those. Size on a spinner bait, I usually like a, a 3 to 4 oh depending on the weight. The bigger, like if I'm throwing a half ounce spinner bait, then I like a 4, depending, usually a 3 or 4. It just depends. But three eighths is usually a three or four. Half ounce is usually a four. That's what I like. Hey, Dave, Dave Locando from Twin Lakes, uh, from Twin Lakes Marine of Twin Lakes, Wisconsin. That's where I get my stuff from. Dave, welcome to the show. Uh, Ted Koski, hi, old friend. How are you? Good to see you guys. So if you guys got any questions that I've missed, just, uh, hey, Mac, how you doing? Um, if you got any more questions, uh, let me know. Is there something about spinner baits? Um, that you want to know about tonight. Um, when do I use them mostly? Most times I like it on a cloudy overcast day. Larry Hayes just joined us from YouTube. Larry, your first YouTube guy tonight. How you doing? Good to have you. Um, I know on Roku, I'm sorry you guys can't see us tonight, um, but you can re-watch this on the Hook and Hunt TV channel on the Pride Outdoor Network uh, when we're done. And if you ever want to contact me at any time, please, please feel free to do so at Jim at hookandhunttv.com. So if you guys have any questions, um, about spinner baits right now. Rick just asked about the hook manufacturer and size of hook. And I said, I'm a VMC fan. I like size three and four, uh, depending on the spinner bait sizes. Most of the time I throw three eighths to half ounce. Okay. That's where I feel really, really comfortable with. When do I throw a spinner bait? Say maybe over a bladed jig, which anybody who watches hook and hunt TV knows I love to throw that or over a crankbait. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell you spinner baits. I usually like cloudy, windy days, uh, I like windy days a lot for throwing spinner baits. When I'm going over the top of grass, sometimes it's a sunny day. Sometimes I like a bladed jig a little bit better. If it's windy and cloudy, sometimes I like a spinner bait. When I'm fishing river systems, I really like a spinner bait a lot, especially with a single Colorado, like that T blade that we have, or uh, double Colorado blades. I like that a lot. 
Um, where I fish a bladed jig probably is more and grass. I also fish a spinnerbait more around wood. There are things we'll probably do another one of these in the future on bladed jigs and how I keep them from hanging up so much in the wood. And there are times when I will do that. But specifically around wood, lay downs, a lot of branches in the water, I really do like throwing that spinnerbait. The neat thing about a spinnerbait is you can make it flutter. You can make it do anything you want. Now, I throw a spinnerbait most of the time on braided line. Okay, and 30 pound suffix performance break. If I'm fishing real clear water, maybe I'll throw it on fluorocarbon or maybe I'll put a fluorocarbon leader on that. I like the instant hookup of braided line, especially earlier in the season. Sometimes just like in a bladed jig, a bass can come up right behind the spinnerbait and swim with it. The rods I'm using right now that we've made with American Tackle with the new um, carbon uh, carbon to graphite reel seats and all that, excuse me, the handcrafted carbon reel seats, as well as the carbon handles. They, they actually make that feel, they transmit that feel a lot more with that graphite. When you're throwing braided line on that and your blade stops on a spinnerbait, you feel it, you feel it, something changes. Okay. I like braided line for that because it helps that graphite and that carbon combination transmit that feel. And I know some people would disagree with that. I like fluorocarbon a lot when I'm fishing really, really clear water with a spinner bait, but braid is my main thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what did Don say, hey, Jim? Hooks are sharp on one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, anybody else? Um, I appreciate all you guys clocking. Like, this is awesome. Hi to everybody. This is great. Roll prevention. Larry, great question. Okay. Roll prevention on your spinner bait. Couple things. One, it depends on the blades too. If the blades are too small for the bait, the bait can roll over. All right. I always pick a head that I know what it's going to do, Larry. I, I know what it's going to do. I have fished this head for a long time. This is just a lure parts online, guppy type head. It's got a heavier bottom here, okay? So, and it's a little bit wider bottom. I like throwing a little bit wider bottom on my spinner baits. The other thing is too, to prevent rollover, you can do something else. If you put a swim bait on the bottom for a trailer or a square, square is the wrong word, but more of a broad profile, of a trailer that can help you come over that. Also, Larry, when you're throwing that spinner bait, don't hold your rod down to the side at a 45 degree angle, expecting that strike when you're coming up and over logs. I hold my rod tip up, so I'm helping guide that spinner bait up and over before I flutter it. The time to practice that rollover, Larry, is not when you're going out fishing when you really want to catch a fish. Go out to a farm pond, go out somewhere where you see a log in the water where you can get to your spinner bait and try a different spinner bait head or two, or just try picking that rod tip up so you can guide that bait over the top of it. Try putting a small swim bait on the back of it or any kind of trailer that has a broad surface on there that makes you feel comfortable. It'll give that spinner bait lift. Okay. So a bigger blade on the back to me gives a little bit more a lift too. Just like when you throw a bigger Colorado on the back, it'll give that bait a little bit lift, a little bit more lift. It'll help that bait from rolling over. Okay. Head familiarity. Okay. What that means is I throw the same head on every spinner bait, guys. So I, I make it out of the same spinner bait, half ounce and three eighths. I know what that head feels like coming through cover. And you go, well, how do you do that? Here's how you do it. You take it out to where you can see it in the water by a branch or by a tree, close your eyes, reel it up over it and see what it feels like coming over there. Get that feel of that bait. I tell kids the same thing when they're fishing a plastic worm or fash, fishing um, a jig. See what it feels like when your eyes are closed. You'll know the difference of a bait. When you're fishing a spinner bait, you learn what that head feels like. So you know, you'll find a position in your rod tip or a blade combination that'll keep that blade from rolling over. Every head is going to be different with every blade. Baits will catch fish by themselves. Us as anglers, the more we understand about our lures and understand they're just tools to get a job done, the better off we are going to be as anglers. There are no magic baits. There's none. There's none. These are tools, okay? But you have to under, every one of you has a job where you understand your tools. The better you understand your tools, the more competent you are as, an, as, as a worker, right? So the more, I'm gonna put this up here right now and put the lure parts online code up there for you too. The more you know about your lures, okay? The more you know, the better you're gonna be able to use those lures. I'll give you guys an example here. Let's get these banners off and I'll just, I'll just talk to you one second. Go back to the comments here. If you want to be good at any lure, take that lure out by itself and fish it till you found every right and wrong way to fish it. And a lot of lures, there are no wrong ways. It's just what you do with it. But learn to fish that lure. Because if you don't, you're going to keep going back to the same thing. Oh, they're not biting today because they're not biting a spinnerbait. Well, do you know how to fish a jig? No, I don't like fishing jigs. Or 
I won't fish a bait caster because I get backlash. Then learn how not to. We've done videos out there. I'll do another one this year about how to not get about how not to get backlashes on bait casters. Bob Hunter said, uh, what'd you say here? Speed is important depending on size of blades. Bob, you're exactly right. You're hundred percent right. In colder water, I move my baits slower. When it's warmer out or the fish's metabolism picks up after the pre-spawn period, I want that bait moving. I don't want them seeing that bait, especially in clear water. I want them seeing a silhouette of that. So if I'm fishing that spinnerbait over open water, I'm going to be moving that bait, making those blades flutter, banging it into everything that I possibly can, a boat dock, banging it into branches, all that. I want it to look injured. Our job as an angler is to get that fish to react. Fish, fish bite think for two reasons. One, they're hungry, and two, out of reflex. If we only caught fish that were hungry, we wouldn't catch that many. Your job, my job as an angler, is to make them react. That's a cool thing about making your own lures, like making your own spinnerbaits and bladed jigs. One of my favorite things about a Rapala crankbait, one of my absolute favorite, is their jerkbaits. I love their jerkbaits. You know why jerkbaits are so deadly throughout the season? Because you make a fish react to them. If you spend the time learning what a jerkbait does, you will learn how to make fish react to it. Deadly, deadly lure, especially in clear to lightly stained water all year long. But a lot of people just let them sit in their tackle box. Take them out when you've got some time. Learn these tools. That's how you become a lot better as an angler, is learning the tools that are out there. Oh, my God. Now there's more tools than ever out there. All right. All right. Uh, let me see. So, Mike, um, let's see. Bang that spinner bait into structure. Mike Payone is right. But I'm going to clarify something. Structure and cover are two different things. If I'm fishing a real heavy spinner bait on the bottom, like on a drop, that's structure. That's a change in bottom contour. Cover is a log or a lay down. That's not structure. Structure is a change in bottom contour. Remember that because even some of the best pros out there still get that stuff wrong. Structure is not a lay down. Structure is not a brush pile. That's cover. Structure is a change in the bottom. Is Mike correct in saying bang it off cover? Sure he is. When you can have spinner baits off the bottom and bang it into that change in the bottom off the cover. You can do that with one ounce, ounce and a half spinner baits. That can be a very effective uh, lure in the Midwest and places like Kentucky Lake or other where guys are ledge fishing. That's an effective thing to do. Uh, Rick Reed said, I've started making my own. Got me interested. Thanks. Well, you're very welcome, Rick. You know the code. It's hook and hunt 10 and you get 10% off. So, all right, love spinnerbaits around wood. Rick, yeah, Rick is a spinnerbait fisherman, no doubt. Um, great. So I hope you guys like this. Hey, thanks for joining us from YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Let me show you some. Let me show you some um, discount codes here that since you guys joined us tonight, and I hope you found this information good. I hope you did. Um, and if you did, please share it. Also, need to tell you something. Next Hook and Hunt TV Live, very special guest, great guy. Troy Linder is going to join us and talk about springtime smallmouths. Also, if I'm not mistaken, we may have a one-two punch coming really soon. A new episode of Hook and Hunt TV, um, as well as another Hook and Hunt TV Live. So if you want anything from Lure Parts Online, please use that code, Hook and Hunt 10. It'll save you 10%, all right? You like my backdrop? I've got some of the coolest fishing shirts and coolest hunting camel out there from Prime One Camel. Put in that code HERO1 and you get 15 percent off fish 419 we're going to be doing a giveaway from them again soon best sunglasses around and just a great great company put in a code thanks jc you get a discount there as well we support autism anglers okay so please go to autism anglers put in the code hook and hunt 10 and you will get a discount there as well last time for the contest go to american tackle.us here's what you're going to do to win this prize pack go to american tackle.us Go there, look up Microwave Guide System. Tell me how many awards they've won in the comments below. I will pick a winner tomorrow night. You want this prize package? Go, tell me how many awards a Microwave Guide System has done. Easy to do, americantackle.us, find Microwave Guides. It'll tell you right away. Put it in the comments right below. I'll pick one of you and you'll get this cool kick butt package from American Tackle. Well, I hope all of you like this information tonight. I sure appreciate you joining us, joining us live on Facebook on YouTube, and on the Pride Outdoor Network on Roku. Make sure you stay tuned for more adventures from Hook and Hunt TV. Our new season has started. we got some great fish catching videos coming soon, as well as more Hook and Hunt TV Live. I'm Jim Crowley. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Be safe. Catch fish. We'll see you soon.